What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Crypto Coffee channel. It's Matt here, your host, and I've got some very special guests on today that are doing some really, really badass stuff that I, I think is really game changing personally. And it does relate to Pulse Chain and crypto as well, but it also relates to saving the world in general. And, uh, you know, guys, this is not first of all, first and foremost, not a paid promotion. I'm never paid under the table to show anything. Everything I do is just from the heart, from things I'm genuinely interested in. Okay. So there's no shady business going on here at all. And, and this is really just, you know, kind of questioning what some of these new projects that are, that are coming to Paul's chain and getting a sense for all the excitement and all the, all the buzz around it. And so I, I have the CEO and founder of Mad Energy, along with a couple of other crew members here. And you guys want to introduce yourself really quick? Hey, I'm George Wentz. I'm a founder and uh, one of the managing directors of uh, Make a Difference Ventures, which we refer to as Mad Energy. Yeah, my name's uh, Matt McDonald. I'm the head of investor relations, also with Mad, and uh, real honored to be here. Thanks for having us. How's it going, everybody? I'm Christian Fioravanti. I am the chairman of the Blockchain Advisory Board for MAD, which is one of the reasons why we are launching our token on Pulse Chain. So hopefully you all appreciate that because what we're doing here is pretty dang exciting and we'll dive into it soon. Yeah, I think so too. And so I hope the chat's pretty excited. I see a couple of the regulars here. Hex Ali, Ryan Burke, DP, good to see you. Crypto Girl, haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming in the chat. Uh, Hex Siren, Bearded Stains, George Tico. What's up, everybody? Um, we're going to just kind of talk for a little bit, but feel free to ask questions and we might be able to answer a few during the end. Uh, but initially, guys, we really just got to set the groundwork. Uh, what are you guys doing as a company at Mad Energy and, and why should all these crypto guys care? Well, basically, Mad, <clears throat> what we've done is we've taken a we've created a platform of experts. And what we're trying to do is place the solution to the energy problems that the world faces in the hands of the people rather than in the hands of government and huge corporations. And that's what sets us apart. And that's why we're out talking to the cryptocurrency community because most of those people understand what it means to decentralize economics because crypto, of course, is decentralized. And <clears throat> if we don't decentralize the way that we support energy projects in the world, as well as decentralizing the grid, we're always going to be captive. Uh, we will never really achieve full freedom. And this is what we're all about. That's awesome. And so I guess for anyone asking in the chat, uh, somebody's like, where do I invest? And say, hey, man, we didn't even start yet, but okay. Uh, we can go to, to <laughs> mad.energy, mad.energy. I guess I'll just put the website link um, in the chat. If you want to check out what these guys are all about, really read the website. But I mean, what better time to ask questions than hearing it straight from the horse's mouth? I've got them all here live on stream. So it's really a beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, essentially, guys, I mean, if you read the title of this channel or of the video, you know that uh, what Matt is doing is they're offering a security token. I think the third ever security token. Is that right? That to exist? It's so correct. third ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sure you had to jump through a lot of legal hoops and regulations to really, you know, tighten everything up and make sure it's all legit, but it is definitely legit. Um, and you can actually in invest in what's going to be the first security token coming to Paul's chain, which would, I think, entitle you just a fraction of some of the revenue of the company. And, that, and that's essentially the token aspect in a nutshell, but it's so much more than I think than just a securities token. And guys, buy it or don't. Like, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. I just think this is a really cool idea that you guys have going on here. And I'd like to, uh, I don't know, whichever one of you wants to talk about what the actual technology is, I really want to talk about that aspect of things. Totally. If I may, really fast, before we dive in here, guys, um, I think it's important to note what MAD exactly is as a company. So it is a... Uh, it is a technology company that's bringing both transitionary and disruptive energy technologies to the forefront and commercializing them for the world. This includes everything from Nikola Tesla's wireless energy technology to you know, hydroelectric dams and geothermal LNG projects. And so I think it's important to, to understand that piece of it first, but then also look at the players behind the scenes. And one thing I'll say is everybody in the crypto community cares a great deal about freedom. That's ultimately why we're all here, right? Self-sovereignty. And if you want to create freedom for the world, 
how do you do that? Well, money is a big key of that, right? But energy is too. Energy can can make or break countries, create wars or stop them. So all of these things are really key in creating more freedom for the world. And without giving names and, and dropping some of these people that George, for example, is very close contacts with, I can tell you, this guy really has access to some of the greatest freedom fighters in this country, as well as around the world. And they work with him. They rely on him. He has clients who work with him that are of very, very high level stature and accomplishments. And these are people that we work with day to day behind the scenes. And so um, that's very important to recognize, I think, before we dive in. But anyway, I'll pass it back to you guys. Yeah, well, actually, I've uh, speaking of George and your history, I think I watched about an hour long video where you really went into detail about your past experience and why it's so perfectly fit uh, for, for where you are right now and why you're positioned, in my opinion, with all the right people and in the right place at the right time. Um, so would you mind giving us another maybe brief synopsis of just uh, your history and how you got to be here and what are you trying to do today? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I started out in 83, 1983, in the oil and gas business. I was uh, with a law firm called Phelps Dunbar in uh, New Orleans after I graduated from Georgetown Law School. So I've been in the energy field all that time, and I've been honored to work with uh, some of the best minds in the energy field. And so we have done transportation, we've done pipelines, we've done exploration and production. We were leading um, the team that I that is mad now <clears throat> actually led the charge to implement natural gas instead of coal and diesel so that we reduce the carbon footprint of the world dramatically. And now, <clears throat> after watching um, politicians and guys in Davos, talking heads, talk about how they're going to solve the energy problem when none of them has ever produced an electron or transmitted an electron, right? And they fundamentally don't know what they're talking about. I decided it was time to bring experts to the field and focus them on solving this problem. And so that's how MAD was created. We got everyone together that I had worked with since 1983. Um, I've been in and out of government times. I've been throughout the entire energy industry. We assembled the best minds and we said, let's solve this problem, guys. And then we married that with some new laws that allowed us to go directly to people, directly advertise what we were doing. And we created our platform, mad.energy, to offer a tokenized security to the general public, bypassing Wall Street, bypassing governments, bypassing big banks, and allowing people to get directly involved. And so what we're creating is a movement of the people to seize this issue, take hold of it, and use the expertise that we have assembled to solve it. So decentralizing, I call it the democratization of capital, because without that, you have a chokehold in, in New York on Wall Street, or you have a chokehold in London, right, where these projects cannot get up and get off the ground. MAD is going to make that happen, and talking to people like you and getting this out to the general public is the solution to it. So we decentralize the capital that is behind the project. That way, no one can shut it down. You know, JP Morgan shut down Nikola's uh, Tesla because he, he was the sole investor behind Tesla. We don't have that. We've got investors from almost every single continent now. It's really wonderful how that is that how that's been picked up. So that's what that's what Matt is doing. We've got the expertise, we have the technologies, people bring us the technologies. We created a um, way to put those technologies together so that they're synergistic and they work together to solve the problem. And now we're rolling that out. And the people are getting behind it and we're creating a, a movement uh, to take hold of energy and pull it away from the establishment which wants to control us and decentralize the entire energy grid, not only in the way that energy is delivered, but also in the way that energy is capitalized. And that's, that's, in essence, the vision of MAD. I'll just add to the portfolio companies and projects we have underneath MAD's umbrella. Several of them have already been up and going for a long time now, developing tech, getting past the R&D stage, right? And so we're not just coming here with a concept and a bunch of vaporware saying we're trying to do these things. These things have been going in some cases even prior to MAD's existence and have now been brought together 
under this ecosystem, which is very, very powerful. And we can discuss more later, but I want to add for those of you who are watching right now, at some point here, we're going to share some very exclusive photos and videos of our trip down to Texas to visit the wireless energy tower and the team. Yeah, man, all this stuff is super awesome. Uh, I've always been a fan of Nikola Tesla, right? It's so, what an interesting guy to read about, you know, this kind of loon bird that was off on his own developing all this crazy technology way ahead of his time, uh, a little bit misunderstood, you know? And when you have something that disruptive and powerful, you're going to get misunderstood by the powers that be. And I think what Pulse Chain and Hacks are doing to the crypto blockchain revolution, it's really paradigm shifting stuff there. Mad Energy is doing to the physical world. Um, and, and there happens to be this nice blockchain crossover, you know, like a Venn diagram style. Like there's this, this middle area where the two ideas can meet. And not only is the physical infrastructure that you're building uh, aimed to be decentralized, but the method of uh, going about investing and fundraising is decentralized. And it, it's being done on a brand new platform called Pulse Chain, which is really the revolutionary new blockchain of the future, right? This is where a lot of the cream of the crop, I think, is going to end up being, right? It's kind of like what I say is the great filter, right? we've had so many years to get this blockchain technology right and so much money has been lost due to hacks and scams but now that we're starting to wise up we're starting to only take the best of the best ideas and and really only give those attention on the pulse chain and and so i'm a big fan of people building on pulse chain because that's obviously good for the pulse chain price but i also happen to be a big fan of what you guys are doing actually the mission behind it too i wouldn't just be promoting any old uh you know project you know some random generic meme coin i have, I have no interest in stuff like that uh, but but I really love the fact that you're achieving Nikola Tesla's original vision. And there's even an allusion in Hex to Nikola Tesla as well, uh, or there's a reference to him. I, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the interest rate in Hex is 3.69%, uh, named after a famous Nikola Tesla quote saying that if you understood the power of 3, 6, and 9, uh, he who understands the power of 3, 6, and 9 holds the keys to the universe, I think. I think that was it. And so I just find it funny that these kind of coincidences and synchronicities are, are happening. And so... Um, everything happens for a reason that's what they say i mean i would love if you guys could uh, give us a explain like i'm five years old version of how these energy transmitters are going to work whoever so wants do you want to handle that uh christian or do you want me to do that no no you're the man go for it george <laughs> well uh about five years ago i was invited down to uh texas to work with a crew that was rolling out wireless energy. And of course, I get calls uh, from all kinds of new tech all the time. And they tell me, hey, we're going to revolutionize the world. It's going to be this. And I'll, I'll go and I'll look and I'll see, you know, people with a little fold up table with a few test tubes and things and Bunsen burners. And <laughs> it's nothing, right? 99% of the time when I go and look at a new tech, guess what it is? nothing at all right so i got down to texas and i'm presented <clears throat> to people who um you know were the leading electromagnetic brains at, at the pentagon these guys are incredibly intelligent they're called the quorum brothers and they had been working on fulfilling nikola tesla's dream of wirelessly tr transmitting commercial grade electricity globally safely for about 20 years when they retired from the Pentagon, they, they went down to Texas and they set up uh, uh, labs and they set up a whole campus devoted to realizing that dream. And that's what I walked into. Now, <clears throat> they had, uh, they, at the first time I was there, I saw a demonstration from a small antenna hooked up to an AM radio station, which was able to use the AM frequency band to transmit electricity about 2,000 meters away from that antenna. And that, at the time, is remarkable. I remember Tesla was coming out, and people were talking about having a mat underneath your car when you drove in. You could wirelessly charge your Tesla. And they were all amazed that they could make that, that energy go wirelessly about four inches from the floor to the batteries of the Tesla, right? And, and here I am looking and seeing electricity going 2,000 meters through the air. And I went, this changes absolutely everything. I got so excited. And so I've maintained my relationship with those folks for ever since then. And as many uh, new projects always go through phases, you know, and they weren't ready for us to get 
involved and commercialized this, uh, this, this amazing technology until now. So this is why we went down to Texas, Jim. We just got back yesterday, and uh, we are now uh, working with the team. And we, we had an extensive session with the Corum brothers, which we actually were able to videotape, and we'll be able to show. And they're explaining in great detail how this works. In essence, the way it works is there is a natural electromagnetic field that, that encompasses the entire globe. If you think of the, you know, the, the earth as being here and you could pop a balloon up outside of it, that balloon would be the existing electromagnetic field that, you know, was created when the earth, uh, when the earth was formed. And if, if you can build a tower at the right height and you can launch a wave at the right direction when it hits the earth, what it does is it creates an ongoing wave that is directed by that electromagnetic field and actually bends with the surface of the earth and goes all the way around the earth. So one tower can launch a wave that encompasses the globe. And that and tower seven point, over the course of the past, say again? Sorry, that's that 7.53 hertz. Is that that certain like resonance or, or whatever that I hear about is the uh, in tune with the earth or something like that? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, um, what, what, the, what, the, what the Corn Brothers believe and what my, my background uh, has been for years analyzing structural failures all over the world, big bridges that collapse, vessels that sink, steel that breaks, all things that blow up. And at the root mm. of every one of those, uh, I've had the best experts in the world teach me, and they always come down to resonancy, frequency, right? There's a frequency that the earth likes. There's a frequency that humans like, and we do better at this frequency. And it's so interesting because we had Foster Gamble there with us. And if you've ever seen Thrive, you know that Foster Gamble is all about this universal force and all the harmony and frequency of the earth. And man, he hit it off with the Corn Brothers because they were singing from the same sheet of music the entire time. It's all about frequency. And that, so what, what, what you have to do is you have to launch this wave at just the right frequency. And when you do that, you're able to encompass the globe and then make use of that wave to carry things. And one of the things that wave can carry successfully is electricity. So imagine being able to provide electricity wirelessly from geothermal formations in Wyoming or Idaho to people in Africa who have never had clean water or refrigeration or sewage treatment or any of the things that we take for granted every single day here in the United States, there's 900 million people that have never even seen that. And this allows us to go with carbon-free production of electricity and launch it wirelessly to where it is most needed. And I just think that that is revolutionary. And, and, and ever since I saw the concept I've been working on it to try to get to the point where we got this past weekend, uh, I mean, uh, this past week down in Texas, where we're going to be part of rolling that technology out. And that Matt is just extremely excited that that's come to pass. I encourage you all to think about that for a minute, what George is saying here. This, you know, making a bunch of crypto millionaires and even billionaires is fantastic, right? But is everybody in the world going to be a, a crypto millionaire, a billionaire? I hope one day, like maybe we can just elevate the world so much and bring all this wealth up. But we're talking about fundamentally impacting the lives of every man, woman, and child on this planet. That's our core mission. That's what we're doing here. That will instantly elevate all these different people over time to a position of being your middle class, if you will, right? And then where can they go from there? When you have freedom to do what you want to do because everything that you, you, you buy, you drive your vehicle, everything costs pennies on the dollar for what it is today. Everything opens up to you. You have more freedom to go out there and do whatever you want to do and pursue your dreams. So that's why I'm taking my gains in crypto, all my time, that freedom that I've been given because of crypto and dedicating it here because this mission, this cause is, is so important to humanity, especially right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's really awesome to, to see what you guys are doing and it gives me a lot of hope. I'm, I'm very optimistic about it, right? But sometimes... 
you know, I'm in crypto. I'm foolishly optimistic, obviously. Like I, I, in 2017, I bought into every white paper that was sold to me, you know? And so I've had to become a lot more skeptical and battle hardened after uh, losing a shit ton of money, essentially. Uh, ba basically just being uh, taken for a ride uh, by a lot of these companies. And, and so it's great to see that number one, you actually have a plan, right? You actually have a business and uh, a real working model. Uh, but I know a lot of it is, number one is about the technology, right? But the best technology doesn't always win, right? We've saw, seen Blu-ray objectively, you know, better than DVDs, but like never really caught on, you know what I mean? So um, that might, might be a bad example, but what can you guys, what gives you guys all the confidence that you need uh, to know or to feel that your the timing is right? You know, because it is a lot about timing as well. I'm I'm asking a question to three people at once. Sorry, I don't know who uh, wants to answer that. <laughs> well, I'll I'll jump in first here. You okay. know, that's a great question, and I feel like given the state of the world, it isn't even so much a matter of um, you know, when will we succeed and and how is that going to happen and and just I mean that's all key factors, right? Certainly, but um, for me, it's this has to happen. There's no way around it. The world as a whole seems to be going in the crapper, and there's no choice um, other than for us to make this make this successful. You know, we have the people in place to do so. And George, George will never tell you his background and go into all the details of how amazing he is. But the guy is amazing, and, and what he's done is amazing, and the people he knows is amazing. And he's assembled a team of the very best people in the world, I believe, at the highest levels. Most of which you will not see on camera. You will not see publicly for good reasons. We're protecting these people but they are the very best at what they do in the energy field. And they cover everything from the legal side, the business side, the infrastructure side, the permitting side, all these different categories. They all have those complementary skills and they bring all those to the table. I mean, LNGs is a big deal uh, in, the, in the, um, the renewable energy world and the energy transition, right? Liquid natural gas. And Walt Teeter, one of the mad directors, one of the great friends of George, people who have worked together as a team for decades being successful in everything they've done, all these major projects, Walt Teeter has stood up more LNG projects around the world than any human being alive or dead. Think about that for a minute. So we're talking about doing deals with the largest governments, the largest um, energy companies in the world. And these are the people that are brought in to make these things happen. So as far as, you know, do we have the people that are capable? Yes, certainly. Uh, is the timing right? Yeah, the world is hurting bad. We literally could not bring this forward fast enough. And certainly the more developed, um, or the more the more R and D specific technologies, things like the wireless energy, need more time to continue to build out and to eventually commercialize. But you know, it really can't come fast enough. Um, those are all key things. Something else is um, we have we have the right kind of support, and I believe the right model that is bringing all of this forward. We're not going to Wall Street. We're not going to the J P Morgans of the world and saying, "Hey, fund your demise. Fund what's going to put you out of business." That'll never happen, right? right? And on top of that as well, too, protection and security. Well, for one thing, we've got a, a somebody you do see publicly, a three-star ex-Marine Corps general with the highest security clearances available. I mean, this is the man that stood up the nation's cybersecurity and ran U.S. Cyber Command. So, hmm. you know, go look him up. Go Google General John Davis. I encourage you to go through all the military websites, look at all of his accomplishments, all the things he's done, and you tell me if that's not legit. So we have a great deal of support from the right kind of people. There are others involved as well, too. Many other players at very high levels, military, governmental, all of the above, that are paying very close attention or actively supporting directly what's happening here. Maybe I'm going too far. I'm not sure how much I can say, but well, I no, want you all to know this is the real deal. And it seems weird. Why are we bringing this, something this big and this real, to people on this stream, right? That always just seems too good to be true. Why would this be coming to you all? Well, that's because as part of our model, Number one, we want the people to succeed. We want the people to be a part of this movement, to fund this and carry it forward and support it, but to also be aware to a degree of what's happening because there's strength in numbers. And if the people are building up this massive community behind these projects, sure gets harder and harder to censor and shut these things down, doesn't it? Absolutely. And you're mentioning a lot of these connections that you have with you're saying the right experienced people in government and politics and the energy sector and your many years and decades of relationships that you've uh, fostered. But I think the number one of the biggest concerns I'm seeing in the chat right now is what Hex Monkey is saying. Um, basically, a lot of people just don't trust the government these days. And, and what makes you guys think or what makes you so sure that, um, you know, 
they're just going to let this happen and they're not going to want to take a piece for themselves. And how are you going to subvert the powers that be? George, you want to hop in on that yeah, one? I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably let George hop in on that one. One thing I wanted to say real quickly to answer the prior question in a in a and to you know to sum it up quickly is that there's new there's a couple projects that we're involved with that you know we've bid on and uh, have been able to negotiate and sign those contracts those contracts are already uh, done and in place ground is being broken and um, those projects will move forward guaranteed so um, that's in relation to the next gen uh, you know data center project and this LNG uh, project that we just signed and there was a press release that went out last week I believe uh, in Suriname uh, we partnered with the country of Suriname and so um, so those things are, are um, you know, set in stone, if you will, and already moving forward. Yes, uh, wirelessly uh, transferring electricity and those kinds of like, you know, uh, um, next next generation revolutionary technology that, that will be a little further down the road and a little trickier uh, for sure. And, uh, it, and as far as like how the government and, and the powers that be play into that, I'd let George probably take that one. Yeah, Matt makes a really good point. <clears throat> what we're doing in Matt is we're using existing technology that is clean, like LNG. It's the cleanest burning fossil fuel there is. So this is really good energy. Um, but it's not the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is totally clean, 100% clean, right? That's what we're transitioning to. But <clears throat> we've also laid the groundwork. We're a business. So we have to have um, ongoing relationships and contracts that produce revenue to the company. And we have those. We entered into an agreement with Suriname to build out a massive piece of land that will have a variety of energy projects on there, including data centers, including um, liquid natural gas. One of the things that we're going to be doing down there is we're going to be capturing gas that is flared right now. And if you don't know what that means, it's it's when you when you explore for oil, there's always something called associated gas. The companies, and in this case, it's Total and Exxon, have offshore exploration and production off the coast of Suriname, or one of the largest oil reservoirs ever known has been discovered in the past five years or so. And so they are pumping oil up, but they don't want the gas. So what they do is they just flare it out into the atmosphere. And that's extraordinarily polluting because it doesn't burn cleanly. It's also wasteful and just because you can capture that and you can do a whole lot of good with it. So what we've done is we've entered into agreements with uh, companies to gather that gas, take it back into the land that we have partnered with, with the government of Suriname, which includes a deep water port. We're going to capture it and we're going to bring clean energy to the nation of Suriname we're also, there's so much gas that we're going to recapture and prevent from bee flaring that we can also liquefy it. And then we can put it on vessels and those vessels are run with, with the same gas, liquid natural gas, as they go across the ocean. We're going to take it to Germany and we're going to replace coal-fired power plants, which is the dirtiest form of electricity production, and use LNG to fire those up. So this is, a, this is a case where we're taking an existing bad thing, we're preventing it, we're turning it into something good for the nation of Suriname, and at the same time, good for the nation of Germany. Those are the types of projects that we're so excited about. That actually is a contractual relationship that we have right now. So, you know, we've already purchased, uh, for example, uh, hydroelectric dams that are producing electricity. We've, uh, we're involved now with Suriname. Uh, we're involved with the next generation data centers. So these are performing contracts that we that we already have. If we never did anything else, we'd be we'd have a lot. But now what we want to do is we want to add and use what we're gaining there, use the revenue stream not only to pay back our investors, the people we're talking to, the people that are buying our equity token, but also to to reinvest and then push the wireless out the door, push next generation geothermal out the door. Uh, these are the kind of things that, that, that Matt is going to do. So it's not, uh, it's not all futuristic. It's combining existing tech that is performing and contracts that we have in place together with the relationships that we've formed and now contractually with 
next gen tech and taking our expertise to make sure that that gets launched as fastly as fast as it can and uh, optimize the return and the uh, business plan that those inventors have. Because a lot of times inventors are so wonderful at inventing, but they're terrible at business. <laughs> so we bring the business sector to it. We bring all of our experience in the energy field for you know 40 years, right, to the table. So that that's kind of how that works. You know, Hex Monkey has a great question here, and it's one that that I I asked when I came in as well too, and got to know more of the behind the scenes of what's happening. How do you how do you protect this? You know, and uh, like I said, there's a lot of players behind the scenes that aren't going to be publicized by Mad. But one thing I'll one question I'll pose is: Is it wise for Mad to come out and expose fully the plan of how you how you subvert or circumvent or get around those who might not like what we're doing? Is it wise for us to come out and show the whole plan? Say, here's all of our cards. Here's how we're doing all of these things, so that the investors feel comfortable. But then you've just given up your your golden goose, right? Uh, and almost it's it's almost related a little bit to like where does the ETH go? Not quite, right? But like you can think about that. Th these things are these things are important, and I can tell you they have been well well thought out. But it's I don't think it's important for us to bring these things to uh, to the public entirely, you know, and, and just lay it all out there. Um, just like in business dealings, right? Do you want to be holding all of your cards, you know, behind the scenes, putting out what's necessary, or um, exposing yep. everything to the, the counterparty? I don't think that's wise. Well, I get that. I mean, there's a reason Coca-Cola doesn't give out their formula. You know, I mean, there there is such, such a thing as business, uh, you know, intellectual property and all that. And so, um, to really lay out the plan, uh, you know, that that might not be the best idea, especially if you're a security, right? And you're actually allowed to make promises of work. I think things are a little bit different. Uh, and you guys do seem very fairly confident, extremely confident rather. And it's good to know that you have clients and customers already that basically you're essentially generating revenue, which you're then going to funnel into starting these new uh, geothermal or whatever uh, systems that, that that are going to be built. Um, and that's a new topic I want to transition to because I know that you guys were just on a trip basically testing out the technology in the wild. And it looked really cool. I saw some screenshots uh, from, from one of my connections there. And saw what looked like you know those old blueprints that, that tesla once had you know those giant it almost looked like a warding cliff tower a little bit so it was very very cool to see you guys all standing below that and shaking hands and taking pictures um you know i, I don't understand the tech right i'm going to be very honest I, I have a very vague understanding based on what george has essentially taught me through youtube and that's about as far as my understanding goes um but do you want to talk about how what you guys were doing uh on that on that business trip and some of the things that got you excited as we do is it cool if i share some photos george please. and matt please awesome oh, yeah. let me see if i can share my screen here for sure it's always better okay. to show than tell you know absolutely yep. yeah all right hopefully this is going to roll for you guys here i'm anxious for us to be able to share with the public the uh, video that we took with foster yeah there's yeah uh, th there there's is a picture of us at the site there was an excellent um, interview we had with i mean i wasn't a part of this was behind the scenes but that george and foster had with the inventors and they really do dive into the technicals so if you want to know is wireless power possible has it been done yes it has and they explain the details of how it works so that video will drop at some point in the future but here's an up close picture of the tower i think many folks have seen pictures like really far out from driving by the highway down in like uh, Waxahachie, Texas, but but this is a close up here. Here's a close up of the actual, um, the very top. You know, kind of that like half domed ball, at the very top of the tower. And and George, if you want to describe more about some of the details of this, you've got some great history on it. Feel free. Okay, so the interesting thing about this tower, which I was back and forth during the construction of this tower, and it is an absolute engineering feat. Because that entire tower, all the, all the sort of tan colored area on that tower is made out of fiberglass. It's entirely plastic. <clears throat> there is no ferrous material at all until you get to that dome on the top. So the reason for that is <clears throat> there's two ways to launch waves. One is Hertzian, and Hertzian goes in all directions at the same time, right? And that's what we're speaking on is Hertzian technology. What this launches is a Zenic wave, and the Zenic is more directed. 
and it's captured by that electromagnetic field that I spoke of earlier. But you have to get it there. And the way that you get that wave up there is much like sticking a coaxial cable up out of the earth. A coaxial cable captures Hertz waves and it directs them. What this tower does is it takes, uh, you can see the coil there where, where the circular wave is, is going up and down inside of that part. And then it, when it gets to just the right frequency, it shoots at the top and it hits the earth at the right angle to create a zinc wave. So you can see there's Walt Teeter, uh, there's Foster, uh, uh, and there's uh, Nicholas Fiorante. Oh no, Christian, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there's a wonderful picture that I took of uh, Christian shaking hands with uh, Dr. Corum. And uh, I, I call it somewhere. passing of the torch, you know? Because Dr. Corum is probably in his 70s, and uh, here we have the next generation. There it is. That's Dr. Corum, who is a massive, massive uh, intellect. And his, his work with his brother has created everything you're seeing. They're shaking hand with what I consider to be the next generation of all of this work, which is uh, Christian. So I love that picture. Yeah, I'm sure we're near as path. brilliant, George. Just to clarify, <laughs> well, it was an honor me. to be I think there with him. Pretty darn smart, my friend. I think you're right up there with him. So, uh, so that, that I love that picture for that reason. You know, I'm in my 60s. Dr. Coram's in his 70s, and here we have guys like Matt and uh, Christian coming along to pick up our work and to take it forward to the next generation and to to bring it out uh, to all the people and really create this people's movement so that this kind of tech doesn't get captured by the wrong hands. The decentralized monkey, the, the guy that asked the question about how do we control it, how do we make sure the government doesn't take it over, the answer is the decentralization of the capital side of it. The re, you know, mm -hmm. We could have probably found a multi-billionaire. We could have, look, I probably could have gone to Elon Musk, right, and said, hey, man, Elon, get behind this. And he might have because it revolutionizes yeah. Tesla. I mean, it made, his cars would then have endless range, right? We can put a receiver in a Tesla that means that it, it can go anywhere and get real-time electricity fed into it from that tower. But we didn't want to do that because, first of all, Elon is, is – I mean, I don't know Elon personally. I know people that do. He seems like a pretty good guy, but he's already got $300 billion dollars. I don't need to make him richer. What we need to do is we need to make the, the middle of society, the people that are the backbone of the world, we need to get that wealth in their hands. And that's the mission of MAD. We're taking this opportunity and we're putting it in the hands of the people. We're bypassing the billionaires. We're bypassing government. We're bypassing Wall Street. You know, I grew up, I was a blue collar worker in Baltimore, Maryland when I was a kid. And blue collared people are the backbone of society. And I hate the fact that we have all these multi hundreds of billionaires. And then we got people in Baltimore that can't put gasoline in their Volkswagen so they can drive to the Walmart to get kids shoes. Right. That's a problem. We want to fix that. This is an opportunity that that we are shifting from one energy paradigm to another. And when that happens, great wealth is created. Mad is designed to put that wealth into the hands of the people, not Wall Street and not Bill Gates and not existing billionaires. You know, I'm not talking to Bloomberg. I'm talking to average people. And we've created a vehicle where they can come in and get behind it. That's what really excites me about our program. And that also is the reason that we can't be shut down. Can you shut down, uh, chain? What happens if an EMP hits the United States? Does it shut down blockchain? No. It's universal. It, it, you might take out some nodes, but you're not going to shut down the blockchain because it, it's all over the world. That's why we're using the blockchain to fund this effort and get it out because it cannot be shut down. This thing launches and goes viral. They cannot shut it down. And we're already there. If you look at the map on MAD, uh, MAD website, MAD.energy, you look at the map of where the investors are coming from, you'll see that we're global already. So that's the way we get around being shut down by anybody. Mm -hmm. That's the vision. 
Yeah, I'll just add to touch real quick. A, Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll make it quick. Yeah, just a you know, just to touch on our trip down to Texas and and the time that we spent uh, with Quorums and some of the other players involved in that project. Um, the the interview uh, that took place uh, at the base of that tower. I'm not sure if it's out yet or if that's still in production, but that'll be um, key for people who are interested in, in how uh, how this tech works and uh, what the inventors have to say about many different topics. Uh, one of which, which was very high on on my priority list to get an answer to, was uh, uh, how safe is it? You know, we hear this uh, we a lot of talk about 5G, and now they got six, seven, 10G, whatever is coming soon, and and um, <clears throat> all the negative uh, repercussions that that could potentially uh, be happening because of that. And so, when you talk about launching this wave and transferring uh, electricity globally, and you're talking about receivers and all kinds of different, you know, um, things that 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 uh, play into this, like how safe is it was was big, and they and they address that. So. Um, whoever's watching this today or, or would watch this uh, down the road or interested um, in, the, in the safety of that tech, uh, make sure you turn it, tune into that interview. We'll be sharing that on our website as well. Yeah. yeah one thing I'll just add to, you know, there's, there's so much talk about the wireless tech and that's because it's so exciting. People love it, but it really isn't all that we're doing here. We have a lot more going on and it's not dependent either on the wireless moving forward. So I want to make sure that's very clear. Again, it's very exciting, um, amazing things. That's why, one of the reasons why I'm here, I'm so excited about what's happening with this greater R&D tech, but that's important to note. On the investment side, if you do want to get involved, just know that our retail offering, what's called a Reg CF, is actually closing today at midnight. So definitely, if you want to get involved, check it out. Go to Mad.Energy. And when you go through the process, as long as you sign your subscription agreement saying, yes, I'm investing, here's the agreement to, it's kind of like a shareholder agreement. You can think of it that way. Um then once you sign that, you're in. It might take a few days for your payment to be approved officially and go through, but you'll be in at that point. A lot of our funding does come from very wealthy individual investors that believe the same things that we do. But uh, on the retail side, they are very important to us. And if you want to get involved, make sure you take action today. Yeah, guys, um, just want to interject here as well. I'm sorry if this is sounding like a sales pitch to anybody. Um, guys, all I do on my channel is I interview people that I think are interesting. And if you're just tuning in, obviously go rewind and rewatch everything all over again. Uh, how this is related to Pulse Chain is that this is the third securities token offering uh, that's ever existed and it's coming to the Pulse Chain. Okay, so it's an investment opportunity that you can get involved in or not. At the end of the day, I don't lose any sleep at night over what you do. Okay, so you take responsibility for your own actions. And, you know, if you like what you're hearing, check it out. There's obviously way more information on their website. Uh, but if you don't like it, you don't have to invest, right? I mean, you can't just say yes to every opportunity that comes your way. Uh, you know, you have to say no to 99.99% .99 of things. Now, personally, I am extremely interested in this. I, in full transparency, decided to invest a little bit of money. And that's all. That's that's my responsibility. That's Those are my actions. And you can do that or you cannot. You know, at the end of the day, I keep living my life. You keep living your life. Uh, but let's just ask some con uh, constructive questions to try to help you know, better understand this and not just say things like, oh, government conspiracy or, or whatever, you know, let's try to actually get to the bottom of what's going on here. And I think Alexander Sebastian asks a pretty good question. Uh, have they got any details on their marketing strategy or current earnings? We do. <clears throat> we have um, the marketing strategy is that we already have <clears throat> secured a number of contracts that we're fulfilling. So that's cool. We know um, that our Suriname project is already under contract with the government of Suriname to be pulled up out of the ground. And the nice thing about when you create energy is that we enter into uh, long-term contracts on the other side of the energy that we're providing. So for example, know that the country of Suriname wants us to build a 350 megawatt power plant on the property that we now are in partnership with the country of Suriname for. We know what we can sell that electricity for to them. We know that we can sell it to the distribution system in Suriname over a number of years. And we spread the capital cost of building that over that number of years. It's called amortizing it, right? 
So we amortize the capital cost over the number of years that we'll be providing that 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 um, electricity to the distribution system of the country of Suriname. And we know all of the factors to build these because we've done that before and we know how that works. So therefore, what we can do is we can pencil out exactly what the return will be to the people who get behind that program. And the return will be between 15 and 20 percent over the course of the life of that contract. And that, that's the target type of return that we do for one of our programs. And so those are the types of returns that we will see. And the reason that we've tokenized the equity is so that it will be easier for us to bring people in at a lower cost. It automates the onboarding process, which otherwise would have to be done by lawyers. But then we also can know exactly how many tokens we, we are going to issue and we can spread the return among those tokens and we know that we're going to be hitting somewhere between 15 and 20 percent on the return that we, that we give. However, as we bring more and more projects on and we leverage those projects so that we finance them, right, instead of using equity, uh, the, the, we believe that our models show and we believe this, we can't guarantee anything because of the SEC would lock me up if I did, but we're telling you what we believe and what based on our ex long experience is that return will be in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 percent uh, once we have all the projects up and running. Cool. cool I think cool. it's important to add as well, too, that that this is very long term, right? We're talking about energy infrastructure and we're wanting to impact not only the region of our our you know, part of the country or the world, um, but the entire world. And so these things take time. Energy takes a lot of time, but it's critical. It has to happen. This is an important mission. And we're not trying to pitch you and sell you on what we're doing here. It's not for everybody. And that's cool. If you have any hesitation about this, I would say don't invest. If you don't feel confident and comfortable and you don't want to um, jump into something without really feeling confident, don't, you know, please don't. We're not trying to convince you of anything here, but we are looking to tell our story. And for those who resonate with this vision and mission and who want to support this and I think be a part of history, this is a great place for you to be. I mean, that's why I'm here too. And I'm, I'm just as much an investor as I am anything else on this team. I believe in this so much. So anyway, good, good stuff, George. Everybody, everybody on the MAD team is, has invested in MAD. So <laughs> we're a bunch of believers, you know. So, I mean, uh, if we come across as being enthusiastic about it, that's because we are, you know. And I'm going to just update the video description right now because we got a lot of people asking for the website. So rather than uh, putting it in the chat over and over, I'm just going to pop that in the video description, guys. Mad.energy. Go look it up if you want to learn more. Yeah, all this really is is a bunch of people with an idea, right? And it's a big idea. It's a really big vision. And from what I've seen, you guys are executing. You, you know, you have real things to show for, you know, real customers, real technology. And... I'm optimistic about it. I would love for this to work and revolutionize the way that we get our energy. I would love to be able to charge my Tesla as I'm driving down the road wirelessly. I mean, how crazy is that? This would improve the quality of life for everybody. Uh, this would literally improve. It's kind of like the rising tide lifts all ships, right? I mean, this is on par with the almost the uh, in, the inventions of you know the 50s and 60s when we had things coming out like air you know, refrigeration and air conditioning and all this stuff. I mean, this is just the next logical progression. Uh, if we know how to distribute energy free wirelessly using geothermal to direct, you know, have transmitters and receivers utilizing the existing power grid and, and putting these receivers on existing power grids, not having to com completely reinvent the wheel. Um, all this stuff just seems like a nice Trojan horse to, to basically uh, revolutionize the entire paradigm here. So it's cool that you guys are coming to Pulse Chain too, because no publicity is uh, bad publicity when it comes to Pulse Chain. You know, it's going to get more eyeballs on our Pulse tokens. It's going to probably increase the price of Pulse, and it's, uh, it's again, it's just one more option for you to invest in or not. Uh, do you guys have any other big talking points you want to cover? I'm trying to look through the chat, see if they have any questions. Can retail buy in with crypto? Yes. Uh, but I think the minimum is $500, right? So Actually, no on that one. We tried to make that oh. available, and we've been working with a banking partner who, I got to say, has been awesome. Like Thus far, they've gone much further than most banks in, in order to deal with us and, and take in escrow and do all that. But we have not been able to get escrow or crypto live for the retail offering for this one. However, 
I do believe we'll have it in place for the next retail offering, which is going to be a Reg A plus, and that's coming in the next few months. Okay, so does that I have think anything we to do can with, take the uh, currently um, in our Reg D offerings, can't we, Christian? Correct. The vast majority of those who've invested, down. yeah, in the accredited offering, they they're using crypto. So that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, you, so there is a vehicle to take you have crypto. To it's cash. just not the CF. Okay. And is there some minimum amount going up for non-accredited, uh, or is that is that true? Uh, you mean for the next offering? Yeah. After this, thirteen hours is up. Uh, I guess they're asking. You know, does, does there just become a higher minimum? Correct. So the but there's also time involved as well too. So the Reg A is going through the approval process with the SEC right now. So that could be, I would say, at least a couple of months. I don't want to start pulling out the two more months thing, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, but it takes time. Um, when that does launch, it'll be a two thousand dollar minimum for the Reg A. That's correct. Okay. Tin Warrior wants to know who is your biggest competition. Do you even have any competition? Maybe in some of the very transitionary tech, but, but not really. George can speak to that. Well, when it comes to you know the the, the technology that we're deploying now to replace coal-fired power plants with natural gas power plants and the liquefaction of natural gas, of course, there's many uh, other companies that do that. So what we're doing in Suriname with liquefaction, the only thing that we're doing differently there that I think there's not people doing is that we're recapturing gas that would otherwise be burned off at the wellhead and just put into the atmosphere as pollution. We're gathering that, and you could do that as like a recycling effort, right? Instead of it burning off and creating all kinds of carbon in the atmosphere, we're taking it in, we're liquefying it, and we're running uh, power for it from, you know, in Germany from that. So no one else is doing that that I'm aware of, uh, but there are a lot of people in the liquid natural gas field. We've got some, I think we have the best. We, we have people that have done the best, most imaginative projects uh, that we've gathered as part of MAD. Um, but there's no one else um, that is focused on, for example, our, um, we're in partnership to provide the energy to what I think is the best uh, data center uh, model out there. So there's not another company that is rolling out data centers that use 40% less electricity and use 98% less water that I'm aware of. So our partnership with that company, it probably stands alone. They have the technology that we feel is the best. What we try to do is go with what we think is the best technology, because that'll give us not only the cleanest planet for our kids and grandkids, but it will also allow us to be in a blue field where there are not competitors at this point in time. So the, the, the correct answer is sort of. <laughs> yep. in, the, in the existing tech, there's all kinds of competition. We, we've been in that field all our lives, so we know how to do that. But in the, in, in the, in the really innovative stuff, um, like we have a computer technology for which there will be no competition when we roll that out. And that is super cool. Uh, we have the wireless tech. No one else can do that because it's totally patented. Uh, so that's super cool. Um, we have a geothermal tech that is the next generation of geothermal because it recirculates water underneath the, the, the surface of the earth. And we're taking advantage of advanced drilling techniques that the oil and gas industry has developed in the past 10 years. And we're applying that to geothermal. No one else has thought of that or is currently doing that, we are because we can go to where the geothermal formations are, we can stand up our next generation geothermal, and we can transmit that power wirelessly. That's why geothermal has not been uh, really exploited, is because you can't transmit it from where it is. It's all out in the middle of nowhere, right? Wireless changes all that. That's the synergy that we're taking advantage of. So the, in those areas, I'm not aware of competition. We're the leading edge. I'm sure there will be. Whenever whenever something happens, other people come in and they compete. And that's wonderful. That, that's the way we want it to be. We want this to be free market. We're not subsidized. We're not, we're not trying to be subsidized. We don't want to, you know, every time I was in the Reagan administration, right? <clears throat> and we were free market people. We, we you know, my I used to always say, 
what the government is best at is it creating unintended consequences, you know? So we are not relying on government subsidies. We're not relying on government handouts. We're doing this in the free market and, and we're doing it in a way that is going to make a return to our investors. And that's satisfying a need that's a real need with technology that really works to satisfy that need. Now, I think, yeah, yeah one of the, uh, sorry, one, oh, one of ahead, the Matt. things to mention is that, um, well, first of all, in terms of the competition thing, you know, you kind of covered that. And it's awesome to be in a space with with no competition, right? That's what, you know, all the entrepreneur advice always tells you to do is go into a blue skies market where no one's even competing with you. Um, you know, competition is for losers, right? That was uh, Peter Thiel. But <laughs> what I think a lot of people are skeptical, you're pitching to a crypto audience right now. Yeah, you know, and a lot of us in crypto are very anti-government. So we hear, oh, you have any connections with government at all. Oh, government's bad. You guys must be bad. You know, so it's like, can you tell, can you say anything to help, you know, the, a lot of the anti-government people like myself, you know, sleep better at night knowing that this isn't part of some conspiracy for big government to get their hands around this and that your connections in the government are, are actually going to be used uh, democratically and to give the power back to the people. Well, you know, the, um, Unfortunately, the energy business has been regulated by government for a long, long time. So I don't know of <clears throat> a way to launch uh, the kinds of programs that we're launching without dealing with the government. It's a necessary mm -hmm. evil. The way that we have approached this is to focus on technologies that basically take people off the grid so that we're decentralizing the receipt of power, right? There's some tech that we have in R&D that is even better than the tech we're talking about at doing that. I'll just can't say anything more about that. But <clears throat> all I can tell you is that when I, when I was in the Reagan administration, I was uh, in the Office of Policy Development and at the, at the Federal Trade Commission. And everything I focused on was libertarian concepts. I was in the libertarian wing of the Reagan administration. I came into that office and there were a bunch of Keynesian economic, economists, right? I fired them. I hired a bunch of Austrians, right? So, I mean, we are, we, our whole force is in agreement with people who are very, very skeptical of government because we, are very skeptical of government. But there's no position in the world where there is zero government. So we have to realize that if we're going to roll out um, electricity, which is a heavily regulated field at the state and federal levels, then we need, need to know how to do that. We have represent we currently represent power companies. I used to represent the power of Mexico. We currently represent one of the largest utilities in, in, in the south, southern region of the United States. So we deal with FERC. We deal with all these things. You can't put your head in sand and say you're not going to deal with any government because there, we're not going to be in a position where there is no government in the near future. What we can do is we can use our experience, which is vast, to make it the best possible rollout that means that it's not controlled through subsidies by the government. The wind farms and the solar farms, they're all controlled through subsidization. You know, anytime you take money from the federal government, you're doing a dance with the devil. There's always strings attached and they're always manipulate what you're doing. That's why we're focused on free market. That's why we're focused on not being subsidized. That's why we're hitting things that decentralize the delivery of electricity, as well as democratizing the capitalization of electricity. So we, we, we have to approach it from both sides. Unless we democratize the capitalization, which we're doing through this, what we're doing now, through the, through the issuance of uh, our equity token on the pulse chain, that is decentralizing the, the, the way that it's financed. So no one can control us, right? On the other end, we're delivering it in a system that is brand new. Now, how that works out in the long run, I cannot guarantee you. I can't guarantee you. 
that the federal government won't say that they have to come in and take it, but I know we're going to fight like hell to make sure that they don't. And so that's the best I can tell you. There's, there's no way to avoid guns for everything you do because they exist everywhere, right? That's the, that's the milieu in which we live. What I can tell you is that at our core, we hate that. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to achieve a gridless society where people, where every single person is living and has energy at their command. That is where we have to get to. And the types of technologies that we're focused on and the very ethos of MAD is to achieve that goal. Yeah, forgive me if I gave the wrong impression earlier, too, talking about some of the players who are supporting this. But I will just add that not everybody that works in the government or military is is a bad person. You know, I worked on the Ron Paul campaign for president uh, back in 2012, and I don't think he was a bad guy. I think he was probably one of the, the best people that was in government for a long time. And, you know, you're always going to get politicians in Congress or wherever that are just they're just dirtbags. Right. And there's there's plenty of them. I know that, but um, but they're not all bad. They're not all dirty. They're not all corrupt. Sixty-five in DC right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So, I think that's worth mentioning here. There are good people who are trying to do good in those arenas. The reason why why I've come to work on things like this and dedicate my life to this work is because I realized working in politics for so long, there's no way we're going to fix a corrupt system from within the system. It has to come from the outside, and that's where crypto is amazing right? Crypto was created on the outside, launched, and has put such a monkey wrench in the system globally that governments around the world are scrambling, still trying to figure out how do we control this? How do we stop it? How do we regulate this to death? How do we destroy these things so we can maintain our control of the people? Well, if we continue to build things on the outside, innovations like that, and roll these things out, when the cat's out of the bag, it's out of the bag. So that's what we're doing. And this is a great comment here as well, yeah. too, about how extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. And my gosh, my friend, I cannot wait to share that with you. When we get a chance to fire up that tower and show it powering a, a region or a city or a town somewhere in, in a really desperate uh, territory. That's going to be awesome. Or even taking one of those Jetson One quadcopters. I don't know if you guys have seen those yet online. Check it out. <laughs> and powering that not with those batteries, but with a wireless receiver, because those batteries will last you 20 minutes if you buy that thing right now. And uh, anyway, so wow. these things will come. It takes time. There's a lot of um, NDAs and non-disclosures that we're under that we cannot uh, you know, break with our partners to go do these things too early, but all of that will come in time. Yeah. Thanks for covering that question because um, I was going to ask it anyway, but yeah. I would love to see a, dem a demo as well. It's great to see that that's on the radar. I'm definitely going to be watching this very, very closely uh, because I'm I'm very excited for what you guys have in store for the future, and it's good to be good to be on board with you guys. And uh, like I said, guys, um, this is not financial advice or investment advice, right? I'm trying to give you the facts about what's happening in the energy sector and, and what I think is one of the most revolutionary products or, or teams or companies, whatever you want to call it, and it's coming to Pulse Chain, right? So we're at about an hour, and that's pretty much where we like to stop these things. Um, so I'm going to cut us off and let's just go around the room and do one last, if you want to show any links or final thoughts, uh, let's start with you, Matt. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for having us. It's been, uh, it's been a fun hour here. Our hour goes by so quickly, but, uh, yeah, as, as mentioned before, today is the last day at the re for our retail offering. So if you're so inclined and feel led to do so uh, we'd love to have you on the team and and if not we got more coming down the road for uh, retail investors and of course uh, for accredited investors is is open now and will be uh, for the foreseeable future but uh, yeah uh, what we're doing here is uh, is definitely uh, world uh, revolutionary here and um, we look forward to bringing as many good people as many people aligned with our vision and mission on board so that so that they can not only be uh, part of the team but part of the uh, solution you know there's a lot of problems in this world and not too many solutions not too many people have uh, what it takes and the and the power uh, that it takes to to make a change and so we're very grateful to be in that position and we're very grateful for the time that you've given us today so thank you cool well thanks matt <clears throat> it was great to get to know you and thank you for having us on and i think uh i've talked enough so i'm gonna leave it there <laughs>
Sounds good. All right. Well, check out mad.energy forward slash invest. That's where you can go to make your investment if you'd like. And just go read up on it. If you want to support us from around the world, just, just viewing what we're doing here and, and commenting and, and uh, not investing, but just verbally supporting it, feel free if you believe in what's happening here. But beyond that, I'll just say, Matt, thank you so much for having us on. It was an honor. And uh, to the Hexicans and Pulsicans out there, we salute you guys. You guys are awesome. We're going to do everything we can to support this community and make this happen. Yeah, really great talking to all you guys. As always, take responsibility for your own actions. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.